The Battle of Dong Zhou was a major battle fought during the Viet Cong Summer Offensive of 1965 as part of the Vietnam War. The battle took place in Phu Long Province, South Vietnam, between June 9 and 13, 1965. In 1964, General Win Con gained control of the South Vietnamese government after General Duong Van Minh was overthrown in a military coup. Although Khan was able to gain control of the military junta, he failed to garner support from the civilian population when he implemented various laws which limited the freedoms of the South Vietnamese people. He then had a falling out with the Catholic faction within his own government, when he became increasingly reliant on the Buddhist movement to hold on to power. Consequently, on February 20, 1965, Khan was ousted from power and was forced to leave South Vietnam forever. The political instability in Saigon gave North Vietnamese leaders an opportunity to step up their military campaign in the South. They believed the South Vietnamese government was able to survive because it still had a strong military to combat the growing influence of the VC. With the summer campaign of 1965, North Vietnamese People's Army of Vietnam and VC forces aimed to inflict significant losses on the South Vietnamese military. In Phu Long Province, the Puf slash VC summer offensive culminated in the Dong Zoai campaign. The fight for Dong Zoai began on the evening of June 9, 1965, when the VC 272nd Regiment attacked and captured the civilian irregular defense group and U.S. Special Forces camp there. In response to the sudden assault, the Army of the Republic of Vietnam Joint General Staff ordered the ARVN 1st Battalion, 7th Infantry Regiment, to retake Dong Zoai District. They arrived on the battlefield on June 10, but were quickly overwhelmed by the VC 271st Regiment near Tuan Loi. Later that day, Dong Zoai was recaptured by the ARVN 52nd Ranger Battalion, which had survived an ambush while marching towards the district. On June 11, further South Vietnamese reinforcements arrived in the form of the ARVN 7th Airborne Battalion. The South Vietnamese paratroopers, while searching for survivors of the 1st Battalion in the Tuan Loi rubber plantation, were defeated in a deadly ambush by the VC. On June 13, U.S. Army General William Westmoreland decided to insert elements of the U.S. 173rd Airborne Brigade into a major battle for the first time. Because he feared the VC could secure a major base area in Phu Long Province. By that time, however, the VC had already withdrawn from the battlefield, so the U.S. paratroopers were ordered to return to base without a fight. In January 1964, General Khan ousted General Duong Van Minh as the leader of South Vietnam's military junta in a bloodless coup. Although Khan had made considerable efforts to consolidate his power, opposition to his rule began to grow as he tightened censorship laws, banned protests and allowed police arbitrary search and imprisonment powers. Khan drafted a new constitution, which would have expanded his power within the military junta. In response to Khan's political maneuvers the South Vietnamese people, predominantly Buddhists, held large demonstrations in the cities calling for an end to the draconian laws which had limited the people's political freedom. Fearing that his power could be weakened by those demonstrations, Khan immediately repealed his constitution and new police powers. He promised to reinstate civilian rule and remove members of the Catholic-based Khan Lao from power. Internally, the concessions made by Khan had the effect of unsettling Catholic officers such as Win Van Tio and Tran Tien Kiem because they were concerned by what they perceived to be the handing of power to Buddhist leaders. Subsequently, Kiem fell out with Khan over policy issues along religious lines, even though an alliance between both men had enabled Khan to remove men from power. As military support for his regime diminished, Khan had to rely upon civilian Buddhist activists to maintain power. For the Americans, Khan's increased reliance on the Buddhists was a cause for concern, because the Buddhists favored a political resolution to the conflict with the communists. Thus, by the end of 1964 the Americans looked for someone to overthrow Khan, in order to continue the military effort against the communists. On February 20, 1965, Khan was finally removed from power, and he was forced to leave South Vietnam. From the communist perspective, even though South Vietnam was plagued by political instability, it still had a strong army to resist the VC. So shortly after the Binh Gia campaign, North Vietnamese leaders reached a resolution to launch a summer offensive, to destroy the regular units of the South Vietnamese military. During the early stages of the communist summer campaign, VC forces in Quang and Gai province successfully destroyed a South Vietnamese task force, led by the ARVN 51st Infantry Regiment, in the village of Ba Gia. Following their victory at Ba Gia, the VC turned its attention to the Mekong Delta region. 
To prepare for their next offensive, Major General Latrong Tan was given the task of directing VC military operations in the provinces of Phua Long, Bin Phua. For the first time, the newly created VC 273rd and 274th Regiments was ordered to join the 271st and 272nd Regiments on the battlefield. Their objective was to destroy the regular units of the South Vietnamese military and eliminate the strategic hamlets to enlarge what North Vietnam viewed as liberated zones. Since May 1965, the VC offensive in Phua Long province had been in full swing. Beginning on May 10, the VC 271st Regiment, supported by the 840th Battalion and local sapper units, attacked the district town of Phua Long, capital of the province. Simultaneously, the VC 272nd Regiment overran South Vietnamese government positions in the subsector of Phua Bin. During their brief occupation of Phua Long district, the VC destroyed several major strategic hamlets in the surrounding areas, such as Ba Ra, Tuan Kiem, Tuan Loi, Phu Ring, Da Kia, Bu Dap, Duk Ban, and Song Bi. In response to the VC occupation of Phua Long District, the ARVN 36th Ranger Battalion was ordered by the ARVN Joint General Staff to recapture government positions there. On May 11, two companies from the battalion sustained heavy casualties in battles with VC units positioned along Interprovincial Road 13 and National Highway 14. On May 12, the Viet Cong 271st Regiment and other support units withdrew from Phu Long District. In the Phu Bin subsector, the VC 272nd Regiment were able to overrun South Vietnamese government positions within 25 minutes, and they claimed to have killed 115 South Vietnamese soldiers in the process. At 9 a.m. on May 11, the ARVN 34th Ranger Battalion was airlifted into a small town located about 14 kilometers away from Phu Bin in the southeast. As the ARVN 34th Ranger Battalion marched upward towards Phu Bin, the VC 272nd and 273rd Regiment was ordered to destroy the Rangers. However, by the time the 272nd Regiment arrived at the South Vietnamese staging area, the Rangers had already pulled out and successfully recaptured Phu Bin. Meanwhile, on May 15, the VC 274th Regiment defeated two South Vietnamese regional force companies along Route 20 and destroyed 20 vehicles in the process. After those operations in Phu Long District and Phu Bin subsector, the VC 9th Division was ordered to attack Dong Zhou Ai. In 1965, Dong Zhou Ai was a district town situated at a road junction which connected Interprovisional Road 13, National Highway 1 and Highway 14. The district was defended by 200 local Vietnamese soldiers drawn from the 327th and 328th Militia Companies, and the 111th Regional Force Company. They were supported by one armored squadron and two 105mm howitzers. There were also 200 Cambodian soldiers of a civilian irregular defense group, 11 United States Army Special Forces personnel and 9 men of CB Team 1104. Prior to the battle, the U.S. Special Forces had assumed control of Dong Zhou defenses, they stepped up guard and patrol activities, and ordered the construction of new defensive fortifications around the district headquarters. The Special Forces camp and the armored and artillery positions on the eastern side of the district. Dong Zhou in 1965 On the evening of June 9, 1965, the VC made final preparations for their assault on Dong Zhou While the VC assembled their formations, U.S.-led forces inside the Special Forces camp were suddenly placed on alert, forcing the VC to commence their attack 70 minutes earlier than scheduled. At 11.30 p.m. VC heavy mortar rounds began to fall on South Vietnamese and American positions around Dong Zhou soon followed by an infantry assault led by the 272nd Regiment. During the initial assault, the VC sustained heavy casualties as they tried to navigate through the surrounding minefields and barbed wire fences, which they had failed to pick up during previous reconnaissance missions. At about 1.30 a.m., two helicopter gunships from the U.S. Army's 118th Aviation Company were dispatched to support the Special Forces camp, they fired on the VC around the compound, and returned to base only after their weapons load was emptied. At around 2.30 a.m., the Americans and a few of the Cambodian soldiers retreated to the district headquarters, where other local troops were holding out. Meanwhile, at Bien Hoa Air Base, all flight crews of the 118th Aviation Company were on the flight line preparing for combat assault at first light. By that time, however, the VC had captured the Special Forces compound, and they began massing for an attack on the district headquarters. An aerial view of Dong Zhou while fighting raged inside the district, 
All flyable aircraft from the 118th Aviation Company flew out from Bianhoa to Fuavin, a small town about 30 kilometers from Dongzhouai. From Fuavin, the 1st Contingent of the ARVN 1st Battalion, 7th Infantry Regiment, was airlifted into the battlefield. At around 8 a.m., the UH-1 formations of the 118th Aviation Company descend on the landing zone near the Tuan Loi rubber plantation. About 4 kilometers north of Dongzhouai, they immediately began to receive fire from bunkers and foxholes surrounding the area. The South Vietnamese command believed the landing zone near Tuan Loi would be ideal to land their troops, because it was distant enough that the VC would not find and engage them immediately. However, the VC had anticipated the South Vietnamese would land troops in the area, and had prepared for an ambush. As a result, after U.S. helicopters had departed from the landing zone, soldiers of the VC 271st Regiment immediately turned their attention on the South Vietnamese. Within 15 minutes the main body of the ARVN 1st Battalion was completely destroyed. At around 11.55 a.m. the last remaining soldiers of the ARVN 1st Battalion were discharged near the original landing zone in Tuan Loi, and they too were put out of action within three minutes of touching down on the field. During the afternoon, the VC had managed to destroy parts of the district headquarters building using their 57mm recoilless rifle. 2nd Lt. Williams then ordered 14 Americans inside the building, along with an equal number of Vietnamese women and children, to retreat to the artillery position located east of the town where they continued their resistance. Late in the afternoon on June 10, the U.S. 118th Aviation Company was joined by other elements of the 145th Combat Aviation Battalion in their final sorties for the day, airlifting the ARVN 52nd Ranger Battalion from Fuavin into Dong Zoai. With the objective of recapturing the road junction and the Special Forces Camp. Following their last mission, the 118th Aviation Company immediately returned to Bianhoa. During the first day of heavy fighting, every helicopter in the unit had sustained damage, including the loss of one helicopter and its entire crew. At 3.20 p.m. the ARVN 52nd Ranger Battalion were discharged on a landing zone about 3 kilometers south of Dong Zoai. As the Rangers marched towards the town center, their lead company was decimated in an ambush mounted by elements of the VC 271st Regiment. Undeterred by the strength of the VC, they continued their march towards the district. On the night of June 10, the battalion began attacking VC positions around the Special Forces camp, and they gradually recaptured the compound and much of the town. The VC eventually launched a counterattack in an attempt to win back the lost ground, but they failed to dislodge the soldiers of the ARVN 52nd Ranger Battalion. The next morning, on June 11, the 118th Aviation Company was back at full strength in Fuavin. Like the previous day, they flew air support and airlifted further reinforcements from the ARVN 7th Airborne Battalion. After the airborne troopers were dropped off on a soccer field, the 118th Aviation Company started large-scale evacuation of South Vietnamese casualties. In contrast to the previous day, the 118th Aviation Company encountered only isolated rear guard actions. Just before the ARVN 7th Airborne Battalion landed on the battlefield, the VC had intercepted a radio conversation between the aforementioned unit and the 52nd Ranger Battalion in the district center. Several months earlier the 7th Airborne Battalion was involved in the battle at Benjia. So they vowed to avenge the loss of their comrades. Thus, from the soccer field, the ARVN 7th Airborne Battalion marched up to Tuan Loi, against only light opposition. The Airborne arrived at the area where the 1st Group of the ARVN 1st Battalion, 7th Infantry Regiment, was dropped off and they collected 7 survivors and 55 bodies. In the afternoon, as elements of the 7th Airborne Battalion moved through the Tuan Loi rubber plantation to search for remnants of the 2nd Group of the ARVN 1st Battalion, the VC 271st Regiment started attacking the Airborne in a manner which had characterized earlier ambushes. Taking advantage of the poor weather conditions that had limited U.S. airstrikes, as well as their numerical superiority, the VC broke the South Vietnamese formation into small groups and destroyed many of them. On the next day, the strength of the ARVN 7th Airborne Battalion was reduced from 470 to just 159 soldiers. After the defeat of the ARVN 7th Airborne Battalion, U.S. General William Westmoreland concluded that the VC still had the strength to continue the attacks on Dong Zoai. In contrast, South Vietnamese forces within the vicinity of Dong Zoai were severely depleted, 
and did not have sufficient strength to defeat the VC. Furthermore, there was only one remaining battalion in South Vietnam's strategic reserve, and it may not be enough to drive the VC out from the area if it was committed. Westmoreland was unwilling to leave the VC with a position from which they could dominate Phu Long province. So, on June 13, he made the decision to insert U.S. combat forces. Subsequently, 738 men of the 1st Battalion, 503rd Infantry Regiment, 173rd Airborne Brigade, were flown out to the staging area in Phu Vinh. Elements of the 3rd Battalion, 319th Artillery also followed later in the day. Upon arrival at Phu Vinh, the U.S. Army Task Force waited for five days, but it soon became apparent that the VC had withdrawn from the area and had no intention of holding territory. On June 18, the 1-503rd Infantry was ordered to return to base. In this battle both sides of the conflict had paid a heavy price to achieve their objectives. After the battle, search parties found several hundred VC bodies within small arms range of the Special Forces Compound and District Headquarters, and another 126 VC bodies inside these compounds. Numerous other VC casualties had been evacuated or incurred in the fighting beyond the town's borders. In their efforts to recapture the district town of Dong Zoai, the South Vietnamese military lost 416 soldiers killed in action, 174 wounded and 233 missing. In addition, over 100 South Vietnamese civilians were believed to have been massacred by the VC during their brief occupation of the area. Total casualties sustained by U.S. military personnel included 20 soldiers killed or wounded, and 13 missing. According to Vietnam's official account of the Dong Zoai campaign, they claimed to have put 4,459 enemy soldiers out of action. Furthermore, 1,652 weapons of various kinds were captured, 390 weapons and 60 vehicles were destroyed, 34 aircraft and 3 helicopters were shot down. Even though the VC had won a clear victory over the regular ARVN units, they did not get away with light casualties. After the battle, a combined total of 126 VC bodies were recovered within the Special Forces compound and the district headquarters, and several hundred more were strewn all over the battlefield. Indeed, individual VC soldiers usually spared no efforts to evacuate their dead or wounded comrades, but as military operations were conducted during the rainy season. The VC struggled to evacuate all their casualties from the battlefield as conditions on the main roads deteriorated. Despite the minor setbacks, the Dong Zoai campaign marked the rapid maturity of the VC 9th Division as a fighting force. For their efforts during the battle, the VC 272nd Regiment received the title of Dong Zoai Regiment to mark their achievements. Six days after large-scale fighting in Dong Zoai had concluded there was another change of government in Saigon. South Vietnamese Air Marshal Win Cao Ky was appointed Prime Minister and Executive Chairman of the government by the military junta and General Win Van Tio became a figurehead president. Unlike previous leaders, Ky and Tio were more interested in fighting the communists, and they intended to stop the Buddhist factions from interfering with their decision-making processes. However, due to Ky's lack of experience in civil government, the Americans were not entirely pleased with the formation of a new government with him as the leader. In contrast, Tio's appointment to the office of president was considered to be a positive development by the American Embassy and Military Command, because he possessed the political skills required by Saigon's political establishment. Nonetheless, KY's ascension to the position of prime minister had effectively ended the cycle of military coups which had plagued Saigon since the downfall of Mo Dinh Diem. In a significant contrast to the political scene in South Vietnam, the North Vietnamese government were far more occupied with their military effort. The North Vietnamese Transportation Group 559, then under the leadership of Major General Phan Trong Tue, was ordered to open new transportation and communication lines through southern Laos and South Vietnam. The purpose was to facilitate the movement of troops and material through the Pa Tet Lao occupied section of the Ho Chi Minh Trail. They were supported by 1,500 workers from the Ministry of Transportation and 7,600 volunteers. By the end of 1965, the strength of Group 559 had grown to 24,400 personnel organized in six battalions of motor vehicles, one battalion of boats, 18 battalions of combat engineers, four battalions of anti-aircraft artillery and guard units. In addition to the expansion of their logistical abilities, the North Vietnamese also decided to establish five infantry divisions and one artillery in South Vietnam. 
Thus, the stage was set for a major military struggle with American and other Allied forces. Thanks for watching.